What is up guys, I hope you're all doing great. In today's video, we're gonna implement a lock-on targeting system. And when your character locked onto the target, he's gonna change his movement stance from normal movement to strafe movement. We're gonna be locking on to some AI we've been producing in the last few videos, but don't worry, for anyone out there who's not been following along with my tutorials, you can just lock your character onto something else in the meantime. Before we jump into that, an absolutely huge thank you to all my Patreons. I can't express how grateful I am to you guys for supporting me to create content, so thank you for that. Okay, let's dive into this tutorial. So guys, if you want your character to change his stance to strafe moving after he locks onto the target, you will need a strafe blend space. And it just so happens I've just done a tutorial on this. So quickly hop over to my strafe movement video, I'll leave a link in the description and whip yourself up a blend space. For those of you who don't know what a blend space is, don't worry, the other me teaching that tutorial will help you out with that, it should only take you a couple of minutes. So when you've got your blend space, let's set up our character to switch between stances. So first let's jump into our third person blueprint. Create a new bool variable and call this target locked. Then bring in whatever key press you want to lock onto your target. I'm going to use tab. Off this, I'm going to create a flip-flop node. And then for now, all I'm going to do is alt drag in our newly created variable, set it to true coming off the first flip-flop and set it to false coming off the second. So when we press tab the first time, we'll set our variable to true. Then when we press it again, we'll set the variable to false. And that's what we're going to do in here for now. So now let's open up our third person anim blueprint into the event graph, pull off our pawn owner and get a reference to the target locked variable we just created. Now we're going to pull off this, promote it to a variable and call it target locked and connect this up to your blueprint line. So now we have a target locked variable in our animation blueprint which will change when the one in our third person blueprint does. Now into the anim graph and into your state machine. Let's duplicate our idle slash run state and call this idle slash run target locked. Then we're going to create a transition to it from our idle run state. And we're going to transition to this state when our target locked variable is true. So open up the transition, control drag in your target locked variable and connect it up. Then let's go back and we're going to transition back to our normal idle slash run state when our target locked is not true. So in the transition, control drag it in, pull off it and bring in a not node and connect it up. Then go back again and do the final transition from our target locks state to our jumping state. And it's gonna be if we're in the air. So double click to open it up, control drag in, is in air and connect it up. Now go back and jump into our target locked state. Delete the blend space that's there and pull in our strafe blend space from the asset browser in the bottom right. Now we need to give it two inputs. So we already have speed. This is implemented in the standard third person template. So we can control drag that in and connect it up. Now we need to create direction. So into the event graph, off your pawn owner, we're going to get actor rotation. And then we're going to get velocity. Then off one of these, we're going to bring in a calculate direction and connect the three nodes up. Then off this, we're going to pull off our output promote it to a variable and call it direction. When you've done this, we're gonna go back to our target locked state. Control drag in our direction and plug it in. So what have we got so far? We've got a target locked bool in our third person blueprint, which changes on a key press. This is then passed to the animation blueprint. Then when this value is true, our character transitions into our strafe movement state. And when it goes back to false, we transition back into our normal movement state. Awesome. Now let's do the locking on to our target. So into your third person blueprint. First, we need to get a target to lock onto. So we can delete everything coming off our key press. That was just temporary. Then control drag in our target locked variable. Hold B and click to bring in a branch and connect these up coming off the key press. So if we haven't locked onto a target, we need to find a target. So let's create a sphere collision to do this. So bring in a sphere trace for objects node. 
This node basically allows us to generate a collision where we can specify the start location of the collision, the end location, how wide it is, and what type of object we're looking for. So let's go down it sequentially. For start location, we want to start at our character's location. So let's bring in a get actor location node and plug this in. Then for end location, we want the collision to end somewhere in front of our camera, somewhere in the distance. So let's get our follow camera by control and dragging that in. Then we're going to pull off this and get its forward vector. Then we're going to multiply this by a float with a value of 1000. Then we're going to add the result onto our actor location with a vector plus vector node. Then we can plug this into our end location. So quite a mouthful I know, but don't overthink it. This is basically just the maths to get a location in front of something. So we're getting a distance 1000 times in front of our camera. For now, let's throw in a radius of 30, set your drag debug type to persistent, and we can test this out. And as you can see, it's working correctly. We've got a collision from our player to somewhere 1000 times in front of our camera. Cool. So back into our blueprint, I'm going to up this radius to 300. Now for object type, we can tell the collision what type of object we're looking for. So pull off our object type, promote to variable, and call it target type. Compile, then add an array element to this. Then set this array element to whatever you want to lock onto. As I'm going to be locking onto AI, I'm going to set it to a physics body. Before we do any more blueprinting, let's just triple check our AI is actually set to a physics body. So jump into the blueprint of what you want to lock onto. I'm going to jump into my AI. Then for the mesh, under collision, I'm just going to make sure that its collision is set to physics actor. Okay, back into our third person blueprint. Off our sphere trace, we're going to pull off our hit and break this up. Bring in a print string and bring in a is valid node and connect these up coming off the sphere. On our hit results node, coming off the hit actor output, plug this into our print string and is valid. So when we create a collision, we're going to print out what we collide with and the is valid, if we don't collide with anything, will stop us getting error messages. Remember, we've set the sphere to only collide with physics body objects. So unless we've got a physics body close to us, the result will come out null and give us an error. The is valid prevents this. So off our hit actor again, we're going to promote this to a variable and call it locked on target. So if we do hit a target, we're going to create a reference to that target. Then we're going to alt drag in our target locked bool and set it to true. Bring in a use controller rotation your node. We're going to set this to true as well. So this node will make our player character face wherever our camera is facing. So now when we press our key press, if we're not locked onto a character, we're going to generate a collision. If our collision collides with a physics body, we're going to create a reference to it. We're going to set target locked to true and we're going to make our character face our camera. Now, if we have a target locked and press tab, we want to unlock ourselves. So alt drag in our target locked bool and set it to false. Then set use controller rotation your node back to false as well. And we're going to alt drag in our locked on target. By not putting anything in here, it's basically clearing it. So now that we've got a target to lock onto, we need to actually make our camera lock onto that target. So bring in an event tick. It needs to be a tick as we need to constantly tell our camera to look at that target. Then control drag in our target locked variable, hold B and click to bring in a branch and connect these up coming off the tick. Now this next part is a lot of maths and instead of wasting a huge amount of your time explaining it all, I'm going to ask you to click the link in the description called blueprint nodes. This will open up this page and from here you can copy all these nodes the same way you do in Unreal by click selecting them and pressing control C. Then go back into Unreal and control V to paste these in your blueprint. Off the branch is true, connect this into the set control rotation node. And for the locked on target reference, make sure this is the target reference we made earlier, the one we generated when we had a collision. So as I said, I'm not gonna explain all the maths, but what do you need to know? So the set control rotation node 
is basically setting our screen's rotation. And all this maths is doing is generating us a rotation to look at our target based on his location. And we're using this rinterp2 node to send our screen to the location over time. So it doesn't snap the screen instantly to that spot. So we're sending our camera to look at the target's location. But if you want the camera to look slightly left, right, down or up, you can change this here. Just change the value of Y and Z slightly. If you want to look further down, subtract more from Z. If you want to look further up, add to Z. Then if you want to look further left, add to Y. And if you want to look further right, subtract from Y. So that is almost everything guys. We're generating a target via a collision sphere. Then we're setting our target location variable to true. And this then runs the tick, sending our camera to look at that location. The last thing we need to do is disable our mouse control when we're locked onto a target. So find where your mouse controls are in your blueprint. If you're using the third person blueprint, you'll have the same as me, but it doesn't matter how your controls are set up. All we're gonna do is add a condition in front of these controls. So B and click twice to bring in two branches and put them in front of the movement controls coming off the false. Then we're gonna control drag in our target locked bool and plug these into both these branches. So when our target locked variable changes when we lock onto a target, the mouse is no longer going to be able to add any input. And that, my friends, is everything. But before you go, to anyone unsubscribed, it would help me out so much if you could drop a quick sub to my channel. I remember when I was learning Unreal, I'd never subscribe to any of the people producing tutorials. Only now, years later, I realise how much it helps those people produce content. So if this video helps you out, it'd be so great if you could support me producing content by dropping a sub. Anyway guys, if you've got any questions, drop them into the comment section and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.